Did you know that the CDC milestones just changed as of February 8th? If you didn't, you're not alone. In this video, I'm going to tell you all the different CDC milestone updates for children and toddlers up to the age of five and also why they did this. If you're new here, hello and welcome. My name is Ginny. I am a certified teacher, doctoral student, and mom of two girls, Alice, who is 23 months, and Mina, who is six months old. And in this video, I really wanted to dive into the why and the what of why there is new CDC updates to these standards and whether or not I actually think that these new developmental standards are an improvement or maybe a step backwards. So first things first, one thing that I think is really important to note is while these developmental milestones have always been there and this program has always been there for about the last 15 years, it has not gotten an update in several years. So they updated them on February 8th, 2022 to reflect new studies and new papers that have been, been done collaboratively with a team of pediatricians. So I want to start with the why. Why did they do this? Why did they update this? Well, one of the key reasons that they did this is because they wanted to be able to have more clear ideas for what needs to constitute an intervention. Historically speaking, the milestones that they use are typically designed for 50% of children to hit. So that's an entire 50% of the population that may not hit those milestones. And that is a huge bracket of time. That whole thought, that mentality of only 50% are able to achieve this has really kind of cultivated a wait and see mentality with a lot of pediatricians, which is not sometimes optimal in the best interest of the child. With the new CDC guidelines, now the milestone is actually measured from 75% proficiency. So now 75% of children can actually achieve those different skills, which means that the kids that are unable to achieve those skills yet are in that 25th percentile at the bottom, which actually is a better tool for early screening. So the rationale behind this was really to kind of get rid of some of the gray area and be able to do earlier interventions and earlier screenings for possible developmental delays. So now let's talk about the what. What does this even look like in practice? Well, one of the big key features that they talk about in the paper and also the quick video summary of their study, which I will link down below in the comments if you'd like to watch it, is that they've added in a 15 month and 30 month milestone summary. The reason why they did this is because they wanted it to actually align with the pediatric appointments from ages zero to five years old. And they found that these two were spaces where they needed to have a milestone summary that was not currently available. Because of these revisions too, there's actually 25% less CDC milestones for each month. This is great because before it tended to be a little bit overwhelming, especially considering the fact that only 50% of kids were actually mastering the particular skill. So they've actually cut back the number of skills, 25% less skills are included on each of these months. So now you really know a short list of things that your child really should be able to do. Two other things that they did that were changes is they added tips and activities for you to do to kind of work on these particular skills and also included open-ended questions. This was not something that was previously on any of the milestones. So open-ended questions like, do you have any concerns about your child? Is there anything that seems unusual or abnormal with your child? So really including on those milestone surveillance documents, more input from the parent that's a little bit more abstract and less structured among the different milestone skills. Something else that I was very pleased to see is that they removed duplicate skills. Sometimes on the CDC's milestones you would see the same skill two or three different months because of the fact that only 50% of kids were mastering it the first time so they had to include it the second time because it had not necessarily been mastered by a child at six months. What I really like is this provides parents a real sense of clarity on what it is that you really should be looking for with your child. This I feel like this whole overhaul of this can only be a good thing because that means that if your child is not achieving these milestones based on the CDC's research, that means that they're in the 25th percentile and it might warrant a discussion with your pediatrician about possible early interventions because as a teacher, I know that the earlier you intervene, the quicker it is to get to a solution. And sometimes it just takes a matter of early intervention for a little while and then you don't need to intervene anymore. So finally, I wanna discuss how this is different from the ages and stages questionnaire milestone tracker that I actually do as a series on my channel. I will link it up above here. There is one primary difference and the CDC actually specifically mentions this as well. The CDC guidelines are meant as a surveillance tool and not as an assessment tool. The ages and stages questionnaire is an assessment tool for developmental delays and it is still used and it's still encouraged to be used if you actually go on the CDC and look at the documents for the tools they recommend using for 
developmental screenings, it's actually still the ages and stages questionnaire. So it's not that this is new and revolutionary. It's more of a, this is a surveillance tool for parents to take a look at before you even get to the developmental screener, which is the ages and stages questionnaire. However, if you want more of an in-depth look at the different skills and what the screener really looks like, I have a whole series up there. So my final thoughts on the update to all of the CDC guidelines is that this is only a good thing. Not only does it take out some of the muddy water of, oh, well, your child might be able, let's take a make, wait and see approach, but it also really pairs down the skills that the child needs to know and also makes it really clear because 75% of children should be able to master it now. I think the guidelines that they changed is really, really beneficial for parents to have real clarity on what it is that their child should be able to do. I hope this video was helpful for you and if you like it, please feel free to give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to hang around. I would appreciate you staying here for all the different developmental milestones content and me geeking out over educational stuff. I appreciate you watching and I will see you next time. Take care!